Hello everyone, welcome back to Arpita Sharma classes. We are starting this Let's Learn series wherein we are going to make short notes over the core topics of Indian polity so that you can revise Indian polity in the short span of time. Only five months are left for prelims examination. So we are quickly revising entire Indian polity, the core topics in Indian polity for our upcoming exams. Today we are starting with Panchayati Raj Institution, which is also known as PRI. We will be using flowchart approach in uh, you know covering the core topics of Indian polity so that in less amount of time you can revise more okay so we will this chapter on the flow chart ke basis se pure Panchayati Raj institution chapter ko cover karenge. so when we talk about Panchayati Raj institution we need to remember one thing PRI what is it it is a form of rural local self government not urban rural so this particular point is important and local self government so what is local self-government? Local means where the affairs are, uh, you know, local, where the uh, administrators are appointed or elected by local people, okay, where the management is done by the local people. That is the Panchayati Raj institution or where that is the local self-government. So local self-government has a very unique definition that you need to remember. The definition is management of local affairs because government does management government kya karti hai management karti hai management of what affairs ठीक है जितने भी affairs होते हैं एक particular area में those are governed by the government managed by the government and where they are saying local self government that means local affairs will be there so management of local affairs by local bodies because it's a local self government the organization or bodies would be local and here the people who will be working in these local bodies are elected by local people. That is the direct definition of rural local self-government management of management where it is coming from, from government. Management of local affairs by local bodies which are elected by local people. Okay. So here we need to understand few things. First, management is being done of what? Of local affairs. Of what? Of local affairs of by by whom? By local bodies who are elected by local people. Elected by local people. So, is tarike se short flowchart you can create to remember the definition of rural local self-government which is management of what? Local affairs by local bodies elected by local people. Now in India, it was constitutionalized through 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act 1992. You need to remember this. India mein these Panchayati Raj institutions were constitutionalized through which Amendment Act? Through the 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act 1992. Why it was constitutionalized? क्यों इसको एक constitutional उपाधि दी गई सांविधानिक तौर पे इसको establish क्यों किया गया why the question is why the answer is simple to build democracy at the grassroots levels बिल्कुल जड़ों में जाके भारत के democracy को establish करने के लिए इसको constitutionalized किया गया so that the rural development in the country can be done in a proper way and in its present form and structure this Panchayati Raj institution PRI it has completed almost 26 to 27 years of its existence also. Okay. Point clear hua. So, democracy ko strengthen karne ke liye, decentralize karne ke liye, PRI establish kiya gaya hai. To decentralize, to strengthen democracy, this has been established. Now, another important, you know, uh, point in this particular chapter is, how did Panchayati Raj institution evolve? Is ka evolution kaise hua? Let us study that. I hope you have written down this in your notebook. Please write it down. So, the history of Panchayati Raj institution can be divided into different eras, different periods. First period is, write it down, it is the Vedic era. Pehla period ho jata hai hamara Vedic era. Now, Vedic era, where do we study PRI in the Vedic era? Through the Sanskrit, Sanskrit uh, scriptures. Okay, in the Sanskrit scriptures, please write it down. Is cheese ko liklo. In the Sanskrit scriptures, in the Sanskrit scriptures, we have this word called Panchayatan. Hamare paas ye word a jata hai, 
panchayat and this is in the sanskrit scriptures okay this word is mentioned panchayatan panch means this word panch means five okay panch means five ayatan means group theek hai so panchayatan means write it down it means group of it means group of five persons theek hai group of five persons and one of these five person is a spiritual man theek hai inme se ek insaan hota tha jo spiritual hua karta tha theek hai point clear so one would be spiritual other four would be normal from different uh, academically intelligent from different eras from different uh, sorry uh, fields of study and one would be spiritual and that is how they used to you know gradually uh, include the concept of spirituality also in the village era okay in the village area and even in the rigveda rigveda there are four vedas na in the rigveda which is the very first veda there is a word which is mentioned which is known as sabha theek hai and another word is also mentioned samiti okay and another word is mentioned which is known as vidhata this is important for prelims please write it down don't ignore it question on sabha samiti vidhata have been asked time and again in prelims okay so these were known as write it down these were known as local cell units इनको लोकल सेल्फ यूनिट्स बोलते थे ठीक है दीज वर नोन एज लोकल सेल्फ यूनिट्स एंड दीज वर द डेमोक्रेटिक बॉडीज एट द लोकल लेवल्स ये क्या थी तीनों व्हाट वर दीज डेमोक्रेटिक बॉडीज प्लीज ड्रॉ दिस फ्लो चार्ट बिकॉज़ इट इज गोइंग टू हेल्प यू इन योर रिवीजन ओके डेमोक्रेटिक बॉडीज एट व्हिच लेवल एट द लोकल लेवल लोकल लेवल की डेमोक्रेटिक बॉडीज हुआ करती थी एंड द किंग दिस इज द किंग ओके दिस इज द किंग the king used to get write it down draw this used to get approval used to get approval from these bodies from these local level bodies okay because the king used to include all the janta the praja the society in his decision us time par during the vedic era the king's duty was to take care of the praja to take care of the people in his kingdom so the people in this kingdom was represented by this local level democratic bodies so the king used to get approval from these bodies to pass his decision okay now comes the second phase epic era we studied the vedic era now the epic era we know in the epic era we have two great epics first is ramayana second is mahabharata pehla ramayan hai second hai mahabharat these are the two great epics ramayana mahabharata okay and when we study ramayana here the administration this is the short form of administration is divided into two parts one part is known as pur second part is known as janpad okay pur is basically the city janpad is basically the village okay point clear so in ramayana administration was divided into two parts pur and janpad city and village okay and in the whole state there was also a caste panchayat yahan par caste panchayat bhi hua karti thi there was also a concept of caste panchayat okay and one person elected by caste panchayat was a member of king's council of minister so write it down one person one person elected by caste panchayat i will just rub it off so that it becomes easy for you to remember elected by caste panchayat would be a member of king's council of ministers theek hai point clear ho gaya com council of ministers ek banda jo caste panchayat ke dwara elected hota tha wo council of minister ka member hota tha theek hai self government of a village finds ample expression in the shanti parva mahabharat mein we have a shanti parva write it down there is an incident of shanti parva in mahabharat okay in the manusmriti also in kautilya's arthashastra also there is a concept of self government self government ka concept hota hai theek hai of village 
इवन इन राइट इट डाउन मनुस्मृति एपिक एरा में यहां पर लिखो मनुस्मृति में भी देर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ आई जस्ट गेस मनु स्मृति देर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ शांति पर्व एंड इवन इन कौटिल्या अर्थ शास्त्र यू विल फाइंड दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक एज पर द महाभारत ओवर एंड अब विलेज देर वर यूनिट ऑफ टेन ट्वेंटी हंड्रेड एंड थाउजेंड विलेज ग्रुप सो दिस इज अलेज एंड इसके ऊपर ओवर एंड अब द विलेज देर वॉज देर वॉज अ यूनिट ऑफ टेन विलेजेस ट्वेंटी ब्लॉक्स ऑफ विलेजेस ओके देन हंड्रेड ब्लॉक्स ऑफ विलेजेस थाउजेंड ब्लॉक्स ऑफ विलेजेस This is we are talking about Mahabharata. ये हम बात कर रहे हैं इधर महाभारत की ठीक है So over and above the villages, there were there were units, different several units. ठीक है टेन ट्वेंटी हंड्रेड थाउजेंड ओके एंड इन द विलेजेस द ग्रामिक राइट इट डाउन दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर प्रिलिम्स द ग्रामिक वॉज द चीफ ऑफिशियल ऑफ द विलेज विलेज का चीफ ऑफिशियल ग्रामिक होता था ठीक है देन देर वॉज राइट इट डाउन Dashap. Dashap was chief of this ten villages. ये जो दस विलेज थे ना टेन विलेजेस चीफ ऑफ टेन विलेजेस वॉज दशप ठीक है दस मीन्स टेन ओके देन दी चीफ ऑफ ट्वेंटी विलेज ट्वेंटी विलेज के चीफ को क्या बोलते थे आई राइट इट डाउन ओवर हियर चीफ ऑफ ट्वेंटी विलेज ही वॉज नोन एज राइट इट डाउन विंशिया ही वॉज नोन एज विंशिया अधिपति He was known as Vinchya Adhipati, the chief of hundred village. ये hundred village का जो chief था उसको क्या बोलते थे? The chief of hundred village was known as write it down, Shat Gram Adhyaksha. ठीक है? Shat means hundred, Gram means village, Adhyaksh means chief. Okay? Then the chief of thousand village was known as इसके जो chief होता था उसको क्या बोलते थे? The chief of thousand village was known as Shat Gram Pati. Okay, Shat Gram Pati was the chief of thousand village. Chief of hundred village was Shat Gram Adhyaksh. Chief of twenty village was Vinchya Adhipati, and chief of ten villages was known as Dashya. ठीक है point clear हो गया. So these chiefs, what they used to do? They used to collect local taxes. Okay, they were responsible for the defence of their villages. Now comes the third phase. The third phase of evolution was ancient period. Now in the ancient period, we'll see Kautilya's Arth Shastra. It talks about the concept of town. Town was known as Pur, and the chief of town was Nagarik. The chief or head होता था town का उसको Nagarik बोलते थे. And there are no interferences in local bodies. And even in the Kautilya's Arth Shastra, it is mentioned that the king never used to interfere in the administration of local bodies because the people and their will. and their desires were supreme for the king and then in the gupta period we see there was existence of local self government because we read about district official that is vishyapati village headman who was known as grampati gram means village headman means pati district means vishya official means pati okay point clear and you know in the uh, you know ancient period we see that there were no women who used to head the panchayat or even used to participate in the panchayat Okay, that point you have to remember for your prelims. So we have studied the Vedic period, the ancient period. We have studied the epic era also. Now we will study the fourth phase of evolution of Panchayati Raj, which is the medieval period. Now in the uh, third, uh, fourth phase of evolution, which is the medieval period, we see the Sultanate period. The sultans of Delhi they divided the kingdoms into provinces, which were known as vilayat. Provinces were known as vilayat. Okay. and during the medieval period the governance of village was headed by three important officials this is important for prelims these three important officials were known as first was mukaddam who was the uh, who was responsible for administration of the village second was patwari you must have heard about patwari right you know in this period also patwari used is the one who collects the revenues and third was chaudhri Chaudhary, so obviously, in the villages of you know Haryana, you will see there are Chaudhrys. Chaudhrys basically at in the medieval period they used to help in settling the disputes with the help of punch. Okay, the head of the village, and the villages had sufficient powers when it comes to you know guarding their territory. But in the medieval period there was a new system that emerged, which was the system of caste caste system, and write it down. 
feudalistic system these were the two systems which emerged during medieval period based on caste and based on ownership of land feudalistic that means ownership of land and casteism based on different caste so under the mughal rule you know we know the mughal rule started you know eroding the self government governance in villages why because of these two systems so if in mains question comes what was the reason behind the erosion of panchayati raj institutions in the medieval period under mughal sultanate the reason was emergence of casteism and feudalistic system this is also important for your mains gs paper 1 and paper 2 and pubad optional this is important for prelims also so make sure you are paying attention to these two systems okay now coming towards the fifth phase ab hum aa jate hain yahan par fifth phase par which is the british period in the fifth phase we'll see that the village panchay panchayats they started becoming weak because they were losing their autonomy because government was now interfering in their working so their own power was deteriorating but there came the mayo's resolution of 1870 what happened in the mayo's resolution of 1870 this resolution passed by lord mayo gave a boost to the development of local institutions by enlarging expanding their powers and responsibilities because in the year 1870 there was a new concept which was introduced in urban municipalities the concept of elected representatives okay and then we have the revolt of 1857 again 1870 hua 1857 ka revolt bhi piche nikal ke chala gaya tha okay why the uh, village panchayats were losing their autonomy because of these revolts also the finance finances of these villages they were going down okay that is why lord mayo in 1870 passed this resolution okay why on the decentralization of administration that is why okay kyunki finances kam ho rahe the because the villages were revolting because they were not being given proper autonomy that is why the agitation started in the villages also in the 1857 revolt keeping that in mind lord mayo said that we need to elect representatives in urban municipalities we need to boost up their activities so that more and more tax can be collected okay so the local institutions were also starting to get developed now also after lord mayo's resolution in 1882 lord ripon also introduced democratic framework in the local institutions how there was a system which was established by lord ripon so here the all the existing boards they were mandated to have a two third majority of non officials who had to be elected and chairman of these bodies had to be from among elected non officials non officials means from the local area from the local uh, village okay so jitne bhi boards honge local institutions ke un sab mein two third majority jo honge wo non officials honge ठीक है उन और उन बोर्ड्स इन बॉडीज का जो चेयरमैन होगा वो भी इन इन नॉन ऑफिशियल इलेक्टेड मेंबर्स में से ही होगा सो दैट पीपल वुड बी गिवन मोर वॉइस एंड मोर रिप्रेजेंटेशन इवन इन द गवर्नमेंट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ओके एंड अंडरलाइन दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दिस पर्टिकुलर लॉर्ड रिपोन का ये जो यू नो इंट्रोडक्शन था दिस इनोवेशन ऑफ लॉर्ड रिपोन इट इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी राइटेड डाउन द मैग्ना कार्टा ऑफ local democracy in india the magna carta of local democracy of india basically magna carta means list of rules and regulations right this was known as the magna carta of local democracy that is democracy in the village level grassroot level okay now we are continuing with the uh, you know british period only local self government in the british period after lord ripon's and lord mayo's efforts received further boost when there was the royal commission on centralization in 1907 which was appointed under the chairmanship of ceh hobhouse this particular commission received the importance of panchayats at the village level and it is in this backdrop that another important step was taken which was write it down the montagu you must have read about this in your indian polity m lakshmikant book also Montagu Kemsford reforms of 1919 now in this reforms what happened remember this this reform transferred write it down transferred the subject of the subject of local government to the domain of to the domain of provinces 
तो जितने भी प्रोविंसेस थे प्रांत थे उनको क्या मिल गया लोकल गवर्नमेंट का सब्जेक्ट उनके लिस्ट में एड हो गया इन द प्रोवेंशियल लिस्ट दब्जेक्ट ऑफ लोकल गवर्नमेंट वॉज ट्रांसफर्ड ओके इन दी मॉन्टेग्यू के रिफॉर्म्स this reform recommended that as far as possible there should be complete control in local bodies there should be independence from external control in the local bodies okay but by 1925 by 1925 eight provinces write it down eight provinces had passed had passed the panchayat act the panchayat act By 1926, six states they also passed the panchayat law. So people were getting more and more aware about local government, about local governance. Local bodies were being given more powers and functions. Why? To impose taxes. Okay, and the position of local government institutions remained unaffected at that time. so this this these were the five phases now the sixth phase is the phase after independence okay ye aapke five phases ho gaye of the evolution of panchayati raj institution in india now we are moving ahead to the sixth phase which talks about the post independence period now comes the sixth phase ab aata hai yahan par aapka sixth phase which is the post independence period phase wherein we see article 40 which mentions the term panchayats and then we see over here article 246 which empowers the state legislature to legislate with respect to any subject relating to local self government so basically it is also mentioning local self government concept but it was article 40 which was established in dpsps which talked about panchayat but the problem in article 40 is what is the issue in article 40 the issue is that the dpsps are not binding principles in the directive principle of state policy article 40 dpsp we know that it is not binding so that is why there is an absence of uniform structure when it comes to local governance okay point clear hua aapko there was also a development initiative which was established please write it down there was also write it down a development initiative initiative which was established in india which implemented write it down which implemented the community this is c for community d for development and p for program p for program okay so there was cdp which was established community development programs and they were established on the eve of gandhi jayanti गांधी जयंती के दौरान इसको स्टैब्लिश किया गया था इन 1952, सेकेंड अक्टूबर 1952, ओके अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ राइट इट डाउन अंडर किसके इन्फ्लुएंस अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ इटावा प्रोजेक्ट देर वॉज दिस इटावा प्रोजेक्ट जिसके अंडर इसको स्टैब्लिश किया गया ठीक है इट वॉज अंडरटेकन बाय एल्बर्ट मेयर दिस इटावा प्रोजेक्ट इट वॉज अंडरटेकन बाय राइट इट डाउन एल्बर्ट मेयर who was an american expert okay under his project in india also community development programs were established in 1952 basically all the rural development activities were done under cdp okay point clear then another important point over here is write it down 1953 mein kya hota hai that there was this national national extension national extension service it was also introduced as a part of cdp only cdp ka hi part tha this national extension service okay but the program was not a success write it down it was not a much success theek hai zyada isme successfully program nahi hua tha all right so there were different failures of cdp cdp also was not a success why it was not a success let us study that also so what were the reasons behind the failure of cdp basically first was politics jahan bhi politics aa jati hai then the bureaucracy gets impacted right lack of people's participation because lack of understanding politics was much more excessively in involved in cdp so people were not willing to participate okay 